70-yard reception. And a 35-yard touchdown run. Charge timeout, Iowa. Their third and final timeout. Chris, Penn, Iowa, Penn State is out of position with their linebackers and safeties. Watch how they kind of communicating, trying to make sure they're on the same page. At the last second, they move to the right. And by moving to the right, there's nobody left to the left for the offense. And once the defensive line is separated, the linebackers and safeties are gone. They're all aligned to the other side. And Wadley has such speed. Once he got into the second level, there's no one there. And there he hands the ball to the official after last week where he high-stepped it in. So Iowa up by four. Keeps the offense on the field to again go for two. And it goes to a six-point lead. Two Iowa touchdown drives in the fourth quarter after this offense had been dormant, penned in all night. 74 yards in three plays, 80 yards in three plays. This has been a complete role reversal. It's, it's Penn State grinding away methodically. Iowa striking quickly, barely having the football. Completely dominated and outgained all night. A monster night by that guy, and suddenly Penn State down four. Remember, minute 42, two timeouts, a lot of time for Penn State. There's the two-point try. Stanley flips it high and no chance for anyone to make a play. Just airmail it out of the end zone. So the lead is still four. A minute 42. We talked about the history. The last three top five teams that have come in here have been beaten, including Penn State, on a field goal in 2008. It was a beatdown of the fifth-ranked Spartans two years later. And of course, the primetime game. Keith Duncan with the walk-off winner. 14 the hard way for the Hawkeyes. Looked like we were setting up for another field goal for Iowa to take the lead when Wadley breaks free, and now suddenly a field goal does Penn State no good. Uh, this is going to have a different feel from those other upsets because now it's the Hawkeye defense that's been asked to do a lot tonight. Do they have one more stop in them? to be able to secure this victory, or can Trace McSorley and Saquon Barkley come up with the plays that they need to to get that touchdown to possibly win this game for Penn State? Ingram Wadley, a guy that is not in Ferentz's doghouse every, so that's overblown, that's completely inaccurate. These teammates love him, positive attitude, always has a yeah. smile on his face. Coaches love him too. So Barkley. Not back there. Miles Sanders, fresh legs on the return out to the 20. Reminder, the All-State all-hands-in bus is helping find great teamwork and great work in the community all season long. Who's the team of the week? Yep, each weekend we pick our team of the week. The All-State all-hands team this week is TCU. On the road at Stillwater, 44 to 31. How about Darius Anderson, 160 yards on the ground. Make some catch, some big catches uh, as well, the three touchdowns. You can see it's their first win in Stillwater since 1991. Congrats to Gary Patterson and the Horn Frogs. And now Trace McSorley, who was deeply disappointed by that close loss of the Rose Bowl, wants to use that disappointment as fuel this season, has a chance to rally Penn State from behind by four, from the pocket. McSorley flips it short. Gets made by Jawan Johnson, who breaks free, first down across the 30. They can save a timeout there. Now. Yeah, save the timeout, pick up the first down. Again, McSorley has been in these kind of situations, has the two timeouts. Again, ball batted down at the line. One more time, Iowa gets a hand up. Parker Hesse made that play. Well, everybody seems to be taking a turn on knocking the ball down tonight from Trace McSorley. Who will be the guy that's going to have a chance? All night, it's been Saquon Barkley. But in these kind of situations, he can catch it out of the backfield. But Jawan Johnson, Kasicki, which one of these receivers can beat man-to-man -man and get away and get some separation? McSorley trying to escape, drops way back. 
and just heaves it into the bench. Did he get outside the tackles? We're going to have a conversation about whether this is grounding or not. Well, that's the question. Did he get outside of the tackle box? There is no foul for intentional grounding. The and quarterback once. was outside the tackle box, and the ball made it to the line of scrimmage. Right here is your tackle box, and once he gets outside of that, he's clearly outside of that. As long as the ball goes beyond the line of scrimmage, it doesn't matter. Third and ten. Low snap. McSorley steps up, delivers. Barkley dragged down short of the first down by Josie Jewell. One more chapter in that duel tonight. And a timeout. Franklin will spend it with 58 seconds. Two yards short on fourth down now. I mean, Josie Jewell has been asked to do everything tonight, trying to stop Barkley. And this is the toughest thing you can be asked to do, is be able to play against him man-to-man. And in the pass game. I mean, you're, you're out there in space trying to take Saquon Barkley down, staying close enough to him in coverage that when he makes the play, you got to be able to get in there. Now you got to tackle him. It's one thing to cover him. Now you got to tackle him, and he does it again to set up this fourth down. They may have to tackle him one more time. We'll see if they look to uh, another playmaker or feed number 26. Hawkeye defense, a chance to finish the game, win it right here. You know, Joe Moorhead is a very innovative thinker and as good as Barkley is. You wonder, can you use him in any way as, a, as kind of a decoy to get the defense out of position to maybe go to another guy and be able to make a play? How much does Barkley have left in the tank? 28 carries.